So today, with the baptism of the Lord, we are launching into a new worship series called Grace Alone, where we will look at the Wesleyan understanding of grace over the next few Sundays, but we are going to begin begin that whole cycle with this story today, the story of Jesus' baptism, Jesus who goes to the Jordan along with many, many other people who have heard John's preaching and want to be baptized as a sign of repentance. And Jesus is baptized, and then he comes up from the water and he hears that voice. That voice that Pastor Caroline talked about with our children so beautifully. That voice, you are mine. You are beloved, and I am well pleased with you. Oftentimes on the baptism of the Lord Sunday, I concentrate on that phrase because there's a weird dynamic in our culture, I think. Um, I think we walk around a lot of times with a, with a sense of self-hatred. <laughs> Um, or a sense of unworthiness. And I think that we really need to take it into ourselves that we are loved. No, we don't get it all right all the time. But that's what grace is for, right? But this past Tuesday was Clergy Covenant Day in the North Texas Conference, and we do this every year. Um, active clergy gather with the bishop and with the cabinet, and um, there is usually some kind of work and small table discussion around a particular challenge or issue. And so this past Tuesday, our Bishop McKee had invited Bishop Gregory Palmer from the West Ohio Conference <laughs> to come speak with us about racism within the framework of our baptismal vows. And it was very convicting and very moving and very challenging. And we had a lot of very fruitful discussion around that, and you'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks. Our baptismal liturgy has very ancient roots, as do the liturgies coming out of other Christian traditions. And I think a key word for us this morning is that word liturgy. Liturgy. It comes from the Greek word liturgia, which means the work of the people. So did you know when you're saying the Lord's Prayer on Sunday morning, you're doing some work? Right? when we do baptisms and we do this liturgy and we do these vows that we are doing the work of the people of God, when we do communion, all of that liturgy is actually us joining together and doing the work of the people of God, the work that God has called us to do. Liturgy is the work that people do in public places. That's how it was used in the ancient world. Not only was liturgy what was done by Christian folk, but it was, it was the work that was done by the people in the marketplace and in the workplace and in uh, places of government. But our work is of a particular type. Let me invite you to open your hymnal, if you could take one in hand, and turn to page 34. And let's take a look at what some of our work is about. This is within the baptismal covenant. This is all the liturgy. 
that goes with um, the baptismal covenant, covenant. When we baptize a baby or baptize an adult or a teenager, this is the work that we do here. And I want to call your attention particularly to the three vows that are on the upper left-hand side of page 34. Let's take a look at those. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Strong language. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Again, very strong language. And then, do you confess Jesus as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? These vows are very similar to vows that were used in the very early church. And they arise actually out of the story that we just heard in Matthew's gospel in addition to what comes after that in chapter 3 of Matthew's gospel. As soon as Jesus is baptized, the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness where he fasts for 40 days. And then with his stomach hollowed out and beyond growling, then he faces temptation. Three temptations from the devil. The devil. One of those words we mainline Protestants don't care for. This is real stuff, my friends. And I think that Jesus is able to withstand his experience in the wilderness because of the voice he heard when he was baptized. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And because of that, you can withstand 40 days of fasting and temptation you can withstand it. And indeed, this is what Jesus does. He renounces the spiritual forces of wickedness when he tells the devil, no, 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 three times. Now something that's really interesting about this first vow is it? it is actually an exorcism. Did you know when we baptize a baby up here, we are performing an exorcism? Not that babies are evil. But what we want to do is to set them in the right path because it's going to come at them. Evil, injustice, and oppression is going to come at them. Bishop Palmer this past Tuesday referenced the Orthodox liturgy of baptism, and so I looked it up. It's 34 pages. It begins with three exorcisms. Three exorcisms. Can I share just a little bit of the language with you? Mm. The first two exorcisms are addressed by the priest directly to the devil. Be gone and depart from this sealed, newly enlisted warrior of Christ our God. And if the one being baptized is a baby, the parents are holding this baby. And the priest breathes ah, on the baby and begins to perform these exorcisms. 
And then if it's an adult or if it's the parents on behalf of the child, the devil is renounced three times and spit on. I think that'd be kind of fun. (laughs) At the risk of sounding flip, let me tell you, evil, injustice, and oppression come at us every day. If you are a person of color, it comes at you every day. Bishop Palmer said something kindly and respectfully that has just sunk into my soul. He said, some of you may say that you are colorblind. He said, if you're not seeing the color of my skin, you're not seeing me and who I am. My friends, too many, too many amongst us in our faith communities have to struggle with that. That is evil and oppression, and it must be renounced. And just as Jesus heard the voice that we are beloved, and then was able to withstand 40 days of temptation, excuse me, 40 days of fasting and then temptation, so we hear that voice when we are baptized, so that then we are able to resist evil, oppression, and injustice in whatever ways they present themselves. It is within us to do so. It is our call. My friends, it is our work. It is our work as the people of God. Amen. friends, 